Hey, Drinking Buddies. Thanks for supporting us at our pop-ups. We only have a few more for 2020, so don't miss us at Tama and Japanese Barbecue in Lomita on Friday, November 20th, or at Okayama Kobo Bakery in Anaheim on Saturday, November 21st. Signing up is super easy. Just head to www.okayamakobousa.com and click on the pop-up tab, or tap our posts on Instagram and Facebook on your mobile device. Don't wait or you'll miss out. See you at the pop-ups. Did you order your t-shirt? TGIF, our collaboration with London-based Japanese artist Smith & Co., is available now from our website at www.thedrinkingbuddyshop.com. Use code NEWSHIRT to get 15% off. That's N-E-W-S-H-I-R-T. Thanks for supporting Drinking Buddy. And we had people standing out in the parking lot and arrows everywhere and did a drive through and it was super bootleg. This is The Drinking Buddy Show, where we explore food, craft, beverage pairings, and the entrepreneurs and tastemakers behind them. I'm Frank, founder of Drinking Buddy Artisan Snacks. On today's show, Mark Tigshalar joins us from Solid Coffee Roasters in Artesia, California. Mark is a transplant from Michigan. He got into craft coffee and craft beer when he and his wife moved to San Diego, and his interest grew as they moved up to LA County. He eventually met the original founders of Solid Coffee Roasters and proposed joining their team. Mark shares how they opened up a second spot in Steelcraft, the Solid Mile collaboration with 10 Mile Brewing, how Solid Coffee is getting through the pandemic, and a couple of recommended roasts from their roastery. I grew up in Michigan and found myself out in Southern California because I met my wife in Michigan and she's from this area. So we're currently in Bellflower and she grew up in Lakewood and we met at school in college in Michigan, uh, Kelvin University, small liberal arts college. And then after college, we got married and moved to San Diego. And she went to grad school there. And then we found our way after about six years when we started having kids in San Diego that uh, we would try to be closer to family and uh, ended up back a little bit closer to where she grew up here in, in Lakewood and Bellflower area. I mean, we've been married now for 12 years, got two kids, a five-year-old and a two and a half-year-old that we both adopted. We adopted both oh, of them. Congratulations. Yeah. And uh, so there's a whole backstory there. We, we adopted both of them through the foster care system, which is just a broken system, but also a beautiful system too, that allows kids to find new families. So that's where we are now, just living the dream. And I'm sure very busy. I have a two and a half-year-old myself. Oh my gosh. She's that plus a five year old. Yeah. <laughs> drama queen right now. So. Absolutely. Everything is drama with a two and a half year old. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where did your wife go to grad school in San Diego? She went to this school, small school. She's a school psychologist. It was in Scripps Ranch and it was called Alliant International University. You're going to laugh. That's exactly where I grew up, Scripps Ranch. <laughs> really? Do you know that university then? Yes, I know school? exactly where that is. Yeah, it's kind of a weird little school, but she had a great time and, you know, very focused on her degree. And we met some great people there and just loved San Diego. And that's kind of where I fell in love with craft beer and craft coffee in San Diego, too. I mean, so probably about 12 years ago now in San Diego, some of the OG breweries down there were just kind of starting out. So. That's right. And the same with coffee, too. So I think that San Diego had a big impact on us. But now you're in Bellflower. What got you into coffee roasting? So my story is a little different because when I was in San Diego, I worked in corporate real estate management. I worked for a big real estate investment and management firm and managed a big portfolio of multifamily residential apartment complexes. But I hated the corporate grind and saw it as a means to an end at the time. And then did that for about six or seven years and then kind of went off on my own and tried and failed a few things. And then about three years ago, I said, okay, I'm, I love coffee. I'm going to, the typical coffee entrepreneur story is, I love coffee, I'm going to work in coffee. But I think having some business background gave me a little bit more realistic approach to it. So I met Dan and Kevin, who are my partners here at Solid now. 
And they were the original founders of Solid. And Dan had a printing company and a warehouse. His name is Daniel Cam. It was called Wet Ink Printing. And he had a warehouse, production, manufacturing, printing. And then he had a buddy in Indonesia who wanted to get into coffee and roast coffee. And Dan's like, I have a whole corner inside of this warehouse. Let's put a coffee roaster in there. So they did. And that was in 2013 and started a company called brewourcoffee.com. They were essentially roasting coffee and providing brand assistance with nonprofits and schools where they could go out and sell coffee subscriptions. And then they would drop ship the coffee with the labels of the school or whatever directly to the customers and then pay them out like a profit share at the end of the month. Since then, we've let that brand go. It just got a little too difficult with getting into the retail business. But they did that for a couple of years and then it just kept growing and growing. And then coffee is kind of an interesting thing. It's manufacturing. Is it food? Is it production? So the fire marshal came and was inspecting and said, you guys got to move this out of this warehouse. So Kevin and Dan then decided to get it into a retail location in Artesia, which is our current location. And that's where the roaster is. They opened up that in about 2016. And then about a year later is when I met Dan and Kevin. Dan is a serial entrepreneur. He's doing a lot of stuff. Kevin is a real estate broker. And they had hired general managers to run the business. And they were just too busy to get into the day-to-day. So I then approached them as, hey, why don't I come in as an equity partner? I'll manage the business. And, you know, they dilute their shares a little bit. And then I come in and be the managing partner. And we've just been great friends ever since. And we've had our challenges, but that's how it happened. And I just hit the ground running, managing that location and our wholesale customers. And then we opened another location in Bellflower at Steelcraft. It's a cool little food hall. And we're inside of a 20-foot shipping container. So I went through that. And then that was about a year and a half ago, I think. And now we're building out a roastery in Downey. So, you know, every other coffee professional that I meet, you know, like I said, my story is a little different where I came into a business that was already operating, but uh, it's been an adventure nonetheless. Where does the solid name come from? So Dan really wanted to just provide a solid cup of coffee. And like, it's funny because we hear people say that. They're like, no pun intended. And so he looked at the website and the Instagram handle and it was available. So Dan swooped that up on the website. The logo has a bold, solid font. And we just kind of held to that and really wanted to provide a good, solid cup of coffee for people without the pretentious attitude that sometimes at the time was showing up a lot in these third wave specialty coffee cafes that's losing its momentum now. People are realizing that it doesn't really help your brand to be rude to the customers. So um, That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a neighbor in Bellflower that serves some delicious craft beer. How did you guys end up partnering on the Solid Mile? So when we were doing all the groundbreaking stuff and all the tenants were being curated for Steelcraft, I met Jesse and Emma and the family at 10 Mile and I just hit it off with them. And then, oh man, the construction process was crazy, but we just all stayed in touch and developed a great relationship. And Jesse and I really hit it off and I was like, we got to do a beer, a club together for uh, Steelcraft. And When it was time to start brewing that first set of beers for Steelcraft, I said, hey, bring me some coffee. And we tried out a few different coffees. Jesse and his dad came over and we did a cupping and they tasted some coffees and it became very evident right away which coffee they wanted to try and they wanted to do it in a porter. And since then, we've just kind of done a few different methods. There's definitely different ways that you can I'm not a brewer, so I don't know the ins and outs, but there's definitely some different ways they can introduce the coffee to the beer. So we've tried a few different things and finally settled on the right coffee and the right way to introduce it into the beer. And people love it. I mean, it's super bitter on the nose when you start to drink it. It's almost like you're drinking a cold brew. 
but it has that porter, smooth beer, malty flavor. So it's been a hit and it's been on their menu at the brewery and at Steelcraft ever since we started it. I'm a huge fan of anything coffee flavored and coffee porters are awesome. So I'm looking forward to trying that one out. I think it's going to be amazing because like you said, you've got a little bit of that bitterness, but you also have the smoothness of a porter. I think it's a winning combination no matter what. Definitely. It's like such a good beer to give to somebody who isn't a huge beer drinker too, because they see that like, oh, coffee, I like coffee, porter, you know, that it's just an approachable beer, I think. And it's fun. I mean, I love going over there and pouring the coffee into the tanks and just hanging out. So it's been a fun relationship. They're such good people, love them to death, and I'm sure we'll do it for a long time. When we return, Mark shares how Solid Coffee Roasters has been dealing with the pandemic. Thanks for listening so far. If you enjoy the show, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. Then head to www.thedrinkingbuddyshop.com and pick up some tasty pub snacks, barware, and more. Every purchase he makes helps us support small family-owned businesses in rural Japan and bring you more delicious, unique snacks to pair with your favorite beverages. Special thanks to all of you that have already started enjoying our snacks and sharing them with your buddies. Oh man, it's been tough. Luckily, I'm thankful that just by nature, coffee is kind of grab and go. Cafe seating has been gone ever since the beginning of it. Nobody's been able to dine in, but we just adapted. Sales dropped off like crazy. It was rough in the beginning, but we just were committed to adapting and seeing what we could do. So we did a couple things. First, we just implemented a delivery and online ordering system and marketed that on literally just on Instagram and I think some email blasts. And we ended up getting a ton of orders because people were drinking coffee at home because they weren't going anywhere. So we were driving all over the place. We had like a 10 mile delivery radius from our store. And, you know, at one point there were two cars going for a good portion of the day, going and delivering coffee to people. And that worked really well. We also quickly implemented some grab and go bottled beverages. So we bottled up our vanilla bean latte and our honey oat latte. And that was a hit too, because I think people just wanted to stock up their fridges with drinks. And then the last thing we did, which was crazy, we did a bootleg drive through So if you've ever been to the Artesia Cafe, there's a pretty big parking lot. And since all the other stores were closed, they were restaurants and like some hair salons. And the parking lot was completely empty. So we set up some cones and figured out this way to order through Wi-Fi. And we had people standing out in the parking lot and arrows everywhere and did a drive through and it worked. People came and we made their coffee, ran it out to them and it was super bootleg and fun. And it just allowed us to keep a small amount of income coming in that we never had to close. So we stayed open the entire time we did get a PPP loan, so I was able to keep most of our staff going as well. So That's I'm fantastic. just super thankful. Yeah, I'm just, I'm super thankful to our customers for continuing to come and just grab coffee. And we tried our absolute hardest to do everything by what the health department was saying we had to do with the fiberglass and the touchless. But man, it was, you know, there were some sleepless nights and some stress. Our staff, a lot of them carried a lot of weight of just anxiety and just with things that are going on. And so we just tried to be a consistency for them so they didn't have to worry about money as well. What do you hope to do moving forward? Sales are picking up, which is interesting because it was so directly related to the amount of COVID cases and everything. And now that I think things are like spiking again. Our sales are still slowly creeping back up. So we're just trying to be as consistent and safe as possible with just the grab and go. And we set up an outdoor patio, which has been huge. So I went to Home Depot and got some artificial turf. Well, first of all, 
the city, a lot of these cities have given restaurants temporary permits to do outdoor patios. And the city of Artesia was very good about fast tracking that for us. So I literally drew on a piece of paper with a ruler and a pencil what the outdoor patio would look like with dimensions and like a scale and everything and submitted that because I didn't want to hire an architect to draw something out like that and submitted it to the planning department at Artesia and they approved it. It was like a $75 fee and we have a patio outside that people can sit in. So I went to Home Depot, set up some artificial turf, set that up. We bought a overhead canopy tent, got some parking protection because you have to do that so nobody drives into your customers. It's in a parking lot. Got some trees from a local nursery and set those up. And it's a really cool environment for people to sit and feel normal. So that's helped. And then we just try to stay true to what we are good at. And that's just having good, consistent coffee and just be really great with our customers and love on everybody. And that's our plan for the future. And our macro plan is we rented a space in Downey and bought a 15 kilo roaster. And that's three times the size of our current roaster. So we can be way more efficient with roasting. During the pandemic, my head roaster moved to San Diego. So I took over all the roasting duties as well as all the day-to-day management. So I'm roasting all the coffee right now. So I'm excited for that more efficient, larger roaster to get up and running. And we're just going through like the permitting process right now with the city of Downey, which has been really, really tough to get all that approved. But we are storing our coffee there, doing all our production there, and then roasting there so that we don't have to do it in the small little Artesia cafe anymore. At the Downey Roastery, we want people to be able to come in and see the roaster and buy coffee there, but it is not a cafe there, so they can't come in and get a freshly brewed cup of coffee. So that puts us at the Roastery in Downey, a cafe in Artesia, and a cafe in Bellflower at the Steelcraft. And actually, pre-COVID, we had a little micro cafe inside of a big tech company in Irvine, but that has since shut down because they just haven't gone back into the office. But that's where we're standing right now. We just want to be able to springboard out of this challenging year and be able to just keep growing. I know a lot of consumer habits changed and coffee suppliers or manufacturers had to deal with the fact that all of a sudden, many more people were making coffee at home and wanted instant or they wanted ground coffee and they weren't going to cafes and other places, restaurants that usually serve coffee. So I know it's been a giant transition this year, but I hope it goes back at some point. I'm glad that you have that outdoor area because it does provide a sense of normalcy, being able to go to your favorite coffee shop, get something, sit down, relax, maybe do a little work. You don't feel like you're stuck inside your apartment anymore, your house, you know? Mark shares a couple of coffees to try from Solid Coffee Roasters. Alongside of our brand of solid coffee, Columbia coffee is just something that everybody always resonates with. It's always just a very drinkable, a lot of times it's blended into a house blend or an espresso blend. There's just so much coffee coming out of Columbia. So our Columbia coffee is something we're really proud of for a couple of reasons. One is that we are actually investors in the farm in Salgar, Colombia, which is in the district of Antioquia, which is where Medellin is in Colombia. And in a small town in Antioquia called Salgar is a company called Acresco. And they have about 2 million coffee producing trees. And we met them about two years ago and just hit it off with them. And we really wanted to invest in the whole supply chain. So we put together an investment, just us, solid coffee, no outside investors to invest in some of the infrastructure and supply chain there at the farm. So we're proud of that coffee and that farm. And we have a couple of different coffees from there, but the Silvia or the Ediberto are our main coffees from Colombia. And those are both just really good 
approachable everyday cups of coffee. It's in our espresso blend, but we also have it as a single origin that you can purchase in a bag or on our website and tastes chocolatey, a little bit of like citrusy acidity, some nutty flavors in there. It just is kind of how we think that solid cup of coffee should taste. So, you know, on the bag, it'll say Selgar, Colombia, and that's where it's from. And we are investors. So yeah, it's just a really special coffee for us. It's so good. So as a roaster, I love to see how the coffee looks when it comes out of the, when it first drops out of the roaster too. And this one just has such a good appealing, nutty, light brown color, the way we roast it. It just, and it's super consistent. So it's just a great coffee. I get excited about roasting it every single time. And then we have a great Ethiopia coffee. It's a natural, it's a honey process, Ethiopia from the Yerga Chef region and it's from the Koki or the Koke washing station. So there's typically two different types of coffees, how they're processed at origin, washed or natural. And this is a natural or honey process, which is a little different than just a true natural. Basically it's dried for two days inside of the cherries because remember coffee is a fruit. The coffee that you're drinking is a seed inside of that coffee cherry. And then they're depulped and dried on uh, raised coffee beds for about 18 to 21 days in the sun of Ethiopia. And that coffee is super fruity, as an Ethiopia coffee usually is. You know, there's some peachy blueberry. I always taste blueberry in that coffee. A little bit of coconut flavor. It's a very light colored bean because it's a fast roast. The temperature that it gets to inside of the roaster is a little bit lower than a different type of roast. And it's just a super exciting, fruity, acidic coffee. and We love it. Mark shares what makes solid coffee roasters unique. Come and visit us. It's our bread and butter. We really try to greet you with a smile and treat you as if we would treat ourselves. Well, I can tell by just by your name, you're not the third wave coffee shops because then your name would have to be like bean or roast or (laughs) (laughs) something abstract. And then you would only look at your phone the entire time I'm there ordering coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we really try hard. I mean, that third wave attitude has kind of started to go away. But I always tell everyone that And you can see it on our website. It's in our mission statement. We are passionate about providing good experiences for people because if somebody walks out of that door and they had a great cup of coffee, but somebody was rude to them or not nice to them or just didn't go above and beyond, it doesn't matter because it wasn't a good experience. And of course, that coffee is part of the experience. So we just try to encourage everybody We got to have a good cup of coffee, of course, and we do. We have some of the best coffee, I believe, in the world, but so do a lot of other roasters. We're buying the same coffee as other roasters in California and even in this area. So there's no secrets. We're not trying to pretend like we have something so special, but we are special in that we care about what we're doing and try to invest in our communities and give everyone a good experience. Thanks so much to Mark Tigshalar. By the way, if you're a startup coffee roaster. Between Dan and Kevin and I, we've got a lot of business experience. So we are passionate also about helping grow businesses. So we do have two roasters. So if there's anybody that wants to learn how to roast or needs to roast on a roaster that's a little bit bigger than what they're working on now, that's an opportunity for people out there. We want to meet you, so send us an email, come into the cafe. We love people's stories, and we just really love people. Find out more about Solid Coffee Roasters by checking the links in our episode description. Coming up on the Drinking Buddy Show, I'll present a special bonus episode for Thanksgiving, Bees and Beer Bugs. If you're into beer glassware, you don't want to miss this one. Thanks for listening to The Drinking Buddy Show. Be sure to subscribe and share it with your buddies. Check out our latest artisanal snack offerings at www.thedrinkingbuddyshop.com. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Take care and drink well.